Hello, beautiful being. What's up? What's up? What's up? How are you doing today? Today, we have a nice full day of lives. I think I'm doing five lives. Okay, and the first one, I don't know why I had to show the back of my hand. It's just because my nails, you know. <laughs> um, the first live is with my friend, Chef Ocean. Hey guys, what's up? What's up? Hey, Richard. Love you. Uh, oh, somebody sent me a request. No, no, no. Only Chef Ocean can send me a request. So we are going to be interviewing Chef Ocean. And he wrote a book called uh, Living Foods for Athletes. Living Foods for Athletes, Gourmet Recipes to Maximize Amino Acid Absorption. Okay, so I'm really excited. Hey, Lance, what's up? You like my shirt? Do you guys see it in the, in the right way? Or do you see it in the opposite way? Because right now I'm seeing it opposite, but I'm not sure what you guys see. Um, my friend Frank gave me this shirt, so check out Fruitful Frank. That's hard to say. Say that five times. Fruitful Frank. Fruitful, fruitful, fruitful Frank. Where is Chef Ocean? <laughs> um, I Oh, there he is. Hey, Chef. What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, you see it opposite? Damn. Well, it says got fruit, but if you see it opposite, it's turf tog I don't know I don't know okay here we go ready are we ready hey chef hey Jenna. hi Jenna. how are you I'm good how are you good you're looking good Thank you. I always got to fix my setup, you know? I never know, even though I've done 100 lives this week, I still don't have it right for when I share the screen. Okay. So, so nice to see you. And um, yeah, nice you're in you. Italy, which is... Yep. Yeah, wow. What, uh, what part of Italy? So we were in Rome for a couple of weeks, and now we're in Tuscany. So uh, we're actually leaving after 30 days in Italy and going back home uh, on Saturday. So it's been a wonderful month. Wow. And where do you call home? I live in Oregon. So I, um, Eugene, Oregon. So that's where I'm, uh, you know, based out of. And I have a really nice um, community there that uh, gets all kinds of seasonal fruit. So it's coming up on wintertime. So um, usually in the wintertime, I go to Hawaii. I think this winter, I might actually be going to Miami Fruit uh, for a week. And, wow. Um, and so we have to meet up. Forward. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. it'll yeah. probably be like mid January when I head out there. We'll, we'll see if they have room for us to hang out. Yeah, oh my gosh. Well, I'm about an hour away, so. Okay, perfect, I'll run a car and we'll, let's eat. I, I'm, I'll eat some durian with you, how's that? Oh, <laughs> only, I'm only eating Musan King Premium at the moment because I'm I've extremely spoiled. It. Yes, yep. we'll, we'll have to do that. Oh, it's literally like next level durian. Um, so yeah, very exciting. Wow. Okay. So let's get into your book, which is amazing. Thank you so much for making this book. Um, mm -hmm. it's part of the raw vegan bundle. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you guys know about it. Give me a heart in the comments below if you bought the bundle yet. So I know who we're talking to. Okay. Give us a heart if you bought the bundle. Um, this bundle <laughs> is available only until Monday. Okay, <laughs> you bought the bundle. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to put a heart there too because I bought the bundle because honestly, it's the best deal on the internet. Um, yeah. It's 55 books by the leaders in the raw food movement, such as Chef Ocean, Chris Kendall, Raw Food Romance, Doug Graham, Ted Carr, uh, Karen Ramsey, uh, just some a million other people, okay? And... It is uh, 55 books, all raw vegan, all low fat, over a thousand recipes. You're getting all this for $50. It's literally, it's literally like you're getting every book for like 90 cents each. It's, that's how cheap it is. It's such a good deal. And yes, some, some guys, they got, the, they got the bundle, amazing. And let us know if you uh, made any recipes from Chef Ocean's book yet. Uh, Chef Ocean wrote a book called Living Foods for Athletes. And I want to know, uh, first of all, I want to get into the book and I have some questions, but I want to know what inspired you to write this book? Oh, great question. So there was actually two inspirations for it. Um, the first is that I've had a, a 
you know, 20 year, uh, 20 year goal of mine is to dispel the myth that vegans are weak. Uh, when I first got into veganism and raw veganism, yeah, let's do a little gun yeah. show. There we go. Oh, I didn't know you had your license there, chef. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> nice. That's right. Okay. Registered as lethal weapons. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so, um, that's, that's a, you know, when I first got into veganism, it was, uh, oh, thank you. Great book. Thank you. Um, the, you know, it was vegans were like, you know, dreadlocks playing acoustic guitar, you know, and, um, thin, you know, just th this was the, the, the stereotype of a vegan. And, um, I've always been into, uh, athleticism. You know, I've been running since I was, uh, t 13 years old. Um, I've been downhill skiing since I was very young. I, I have a black belt in uh, Taekwondo and a second degree black belt in Hapkido. Um, I try to move my body as much as I possibly can. I've gotten into weightlifting about 10 years ago, um, mostly calisthenics, body weight. And I'm here to dispel that myth. I don't think that it, there's anybody that I know of recently that is a thin, weak vegan. In fact, vegans seem to be the, and especially raw vegans, seem to be the strongest most attractive people I've seen. Um, they can't help but build muscle. So I, I want to, you know, put that one to rest. Is that these even someone on a fruit-based diet, which sounds like how do they get their protein, right? I get that question all the time. Um, you can't help it. You're going to get protein if you eat enough calories. So that's that's the first motivation. Um, the second was that I was contacted by a vegan bodybuilder, and he's in his fifties, but you know I'm almost fifty. And I wanted to, um, you know, do some research, which I've never done before, into what is the protein content of these foods? What is the carbohydrates of these foods that, you know, the popular foods uh, that I'm eating? Oh, yeah, I got called a hippie there. Yeah, I have long hair. That's about as close as I am to a hippie. Yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. So, he, <laughs> so he's, uh, he's got, um, he had a very strict, aggressive, what I would call an aggressive macro uh, target, which was 20% protein. He wanted between 18 and 20 percent 18 to 24 percent protein per serving um and then his macros also included maximum uh 35 percent fat and 45 percent carbohydrates and um some vegans uh use protein powders he wanted to eat more raw and so he was using like pea powder and hemp powder these concentrated proteins that are you know really expensive i mean they're 50 to 100 dollars for a jar um and you know people get even more aggressive with it they're eating um, you know, whey protein uh, if they're not vegan. So I worked with him for about six months, did research, and wrote down all the um, recipes that I thought might be high protein, just my guess. And many of them had nuts in them. And so that's the problem is athletes don't do well on nuts. In fact, I don't do well with nuts. The protein to fat ratio is is just too low. There's too much fat in uh, compared to the protein. So I went um, I went online and and research what the macros were for, for instance, peas, cauliflower, um, tomatoes, corn, uh, many different types of sprouts, um, uh, mung bean, lentil, sunflower, chickpea sprouts. And then I wrote them all in post-it notes and put them up on my uh, planning wall and then started pulling things off of the wall thinking, hey, maybe I could make corn chowder, but normally I make corn chowder with cashews or macadamia nuts. That's the traditional way of doing it, right, in, in the raw vegan gourmet world. Well, what if I make a cauliflower cream uh, and I don't use any oil in it? So that I got corn, uh, you know, corn chowder out of that. So the next thing was my specialty is Indian food. Indian food already uses a lot of vegetables. So I pulled peas and cauliflower out and thought, hey, gobi matar. I've eaten this many times. Let me see what I can do with it. Um, and then I typed all the macros for my recipes into a sheet, uh, adjusted them until I hit his macros, you know, adjusted the amounts. And did some other substitutions like um, I used zucchini in my garbanzo in my I'm sorry zucchini in my hummus, but then I started using garbanzo bean sprouts with zucchini to increase and tweak the protein content. So I did it. I came up with 20 vegan raw vegan gourmet recipes, including six different wonderful comments uh, condiments. I'm sorry to make the uh, you know your food taste better. And he loves it. You know he's um, very strict about his diet. Um, he contacted me later and said, you know, hey, I made the bread. I have this high protein bread with, um, you know, no, low, very low fat, low carbohydrate, but high protein using um, uh, seeds, hemp flour and things like that. So that was my inspiration. I, I really, you know, wanted to, to learn myself more about it. And I realized that this is an aggressive 
you know, if you're really trying to push your muscle and this, you want to be aggressive about muscle building, 20% protein, you can do it on a raw vegan diet and you don't have to be using these protein powders for it. So that's what I have so many questions. So, but that's what you recommend people that really, really want to build muscle to focus on getting around 20% overall protein. Uh, that's not my recommendation. My recommendation is to go easy on the protein. Oh. But the traditional view, and from his trainer and from his experience, was that he wanted 20% protein. And, you know, that, that's, that's fine. You know, like, go for it if that's what you feel your protein needs are. Um, but the, my recommendation is just to go with your, your gut. Like, right, you're, you're going to get enough protein. If your body needs more protein, it's most likely going to associate the higher protein foods like sprouts and make you crave those if you need them. So I follow a more of an intuitive diet. Um, you know, when I build muscle, I don't concentrate on protein at all. I, I just eat food and that's it. Wow. That's like revolutionary because yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, people are being told by professional trainers and, you know, nutritionists that you need to focus on your macros in order to lose mm -hmm. weight or gain muscle. Uh, or do both at the same time. And you're saying, so you're, and you're saying like, you don't need to focus on your macros. You just need to, what do you recommend then that people eat and focus on uh, if they're trying to gain muscle? Or does it not matter what you eat and muscle is really just about what you do in the gym? No, it absolutely does matter what you eat. I mean, I, I wanna make sure that, um, but my, you know, make sure that's clear. My approach is that your body knows what it needs and your body is very, very intelligent, right? An intelligence that we think we comprehend, but we really don't. Mm -hmm. And so there's a period at which um, you, as, as a vegan or even as a raw vegan, it's very important to train your taste buds to recognize sources of nutrition that your body needs. This means get out of the cereal aisle. Get out of all these advertisements that are tricking your eyes into thinking, oh, yeah, I want uh, Captain, Captain Crunch or these protein powders. You know, they, they've got really attractive people on the front of them. That's attractive. Go to the produce aisle. Pick these foods that look attractive to you. Eat them. Start off with a diet plan. Like my, you know, this, any, any of the raw vegan books that you have here will help you associate at a basic cellular level nutrition uh, in the food with the nutrition that your body needs, your body will crave the foods that it actually needs. And you see this over and over and over. People who suddenly start craving cucumbers or suddenly start craving durian, for instance, because they, you know, and it's, they find out later the research proves those foods are high in something that they actually needed. So protein is the same way, but here's the thing we don't need protein as much as we need amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. Those amino acids are present in every living food that's growing, right? So sprouts being a perfect example of that, they convert the starches to amino acids once they're activated with water. You're going to respond much more uh, strongly to getting these sources of amino acids um, than to the pre-built proteins. So if you're used to eating meat, if you're used to eating the protein powers, powders, what I'm saying is go and eat some sprouts. Uh, use a meal with sprouts. Train your body. Retrain your body to say, hey, I like what you just gave me. You just gave me a whole bunch of amino acids. Next time I crave amino acids, I'm going to tell you to go buy some peas. I'm going to tell you to go get some garbanzo beans and soak them because they sound good. They taste good. They look good. That's the intuitiveness that I'm talking about is you have to untrain all this learning, all the marketing that you've been given, untrain it, retrain your body to sell your level by absorbing these foods through the recipes in the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle. Just get them in your body and your body will change its, um, its habits and say, hey, go get me a banana, right? Why do I need a banana? Well, maybe I need potassium because I'm recovering. You, you don't need to learn any of that stuff. Just retrain your body and your body will tell you what you need. That's, I that's love that, Ocean. I love what you just said. And I just want to touch back on what you said about the supermarket and the attractiveness of these other of these products. So I was mm -hmm. in the dairy aisle the other day because my roommate, she eats like vegan cheese, right? She, she likes the mm -hmm. processed vegan cheese. So we're in the aisle and I'm never in any aisle besides the produce 
department, right? <laughs> so I didn't, I don't know what's going on out there. So we're in the dairy aisle and there's so many beautiful colors. All the yogurts are beautiful, bright pink and red and green and blue. And I'm like, wait a minute, they're trying to make us attracted to these things by making them colorful. And I'm like, mm -hmm. this is exactly what the body's designed to do, where our eyes are designed to be attracted towards beautiful, colorful things, you know, things that are green and yellow and purple and red, and that's all the fruit and vegetables. And the marketing mm -hmm. is so, like they're really, and you know, humans are so naive. We're such a naive species. We're like, they wouldn't poison us and then put colorful things on the packages. But yes, they are doing that. It's for a profit. And what Chef Ocean just said is the key. We've got to just eat the food first before we crave it sometimes. And to retrain mm -hmm. our taste buds, our body. Mm -hmm. And um, I really like what you said. I learned so much already that, you know, if I'm craving certain things, that means I need them. You know, if I'm craving bananas, I might need something that's in bananas that's higher in bananas than avocados. And, uh, you know, I really don't think like that, but it makes so much sense. You got to retrain, yeah. guys. It's almost like your body, too. If you want to get in shape, if you want to get fit, you got to train your body. You got to train your health and your taste buds, too. So mm -hmm. I love that. And by the way, your recipes are epic. So you have sausages mm -hmm. in your book, barbecue loaf. You got dal, like you were saying, your Indian um, Indian food. You've got guacamole. Okay, am I saying yes. it right? Okay. You got it, guacamole. Guacamole. <laughs> okay, so it's guacamole with peas instead of avocado, correct? That's right. Yeah. Avocados are kind of um, something that my, you know, the that the my uh, friend didn't want to include because he, they're too high fat. They're hard on the liver. Um, and people tend to overeat them. I'm gonna not, not saying they aren't a healthy food. They're absolutely a healthy food. But in training, if you're trying to build muscle, um, there's not, that's not, they're not a great source of protein uh, for you. They're a great source of fat and energy, and you absolutely need them. But peas are a great visual substitute. They taste wonderful. And that's how I was able to hit his macros because as soon as I added avocado, his, his, uh, the macros for the fat blew up, right, and the protein went down. But peas were uh, at, using peas just in place of the avocado um, allowed me to, to get up that to that twenty percent because peas are a great source of protein. And um, I actually got some feedback from uh, Lena Rapp, um, who's pure vegan food. She tried it. She made a spicy version of it, and I got to tell you, she loved it. And it's one of those things that you take to a party, and people are like, "Ooh, check out this guacamole!" Right? And suddenly they're like, "Wow, this is amazing!" Because the peas just add so much sugar. The other thing is avocados aren't always good and they're not always available. So what do you do in the wintertime when you want guacamole? Guacamole. <laughs> I'm literally going to make this tonight and I'm going to post yes. and let you know um, how it came out. But honestly, this is genius because I'm also trying to do the low fat thing. I feel better. My skin looks better. Um, and, you know, making guacamole is like genius. That's that's genius. So I'm excited. And it's green, too. So it looks exactly like guacamole. And so I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you real quick, um, tell us about like, how did you discover the raw food lifestyle and where did you like come from as far as like eating previously to this lifestyle? Of course. Yeah. So I started off um, in Ohio, you know, I grew up in Ohio and that there's a huge Italian community in the area that I lived in, Polish community. Um, these are heavy meat based communities. And, you know, many of the people that I went to high school with, um, their parents were first-generation Americans, so they still, you know, were using kibasi, meatballs, meat pizza, sausage. You know, that's what I, I grew up on for the first 24 years of my life. And then around the age of 24, I went on a spiritual journey um, to live a more conscious lifestyle. It was just so you kind are, of the journey. Of the so you are part hippie then. Is that – did we clarify yeah, that Yeah, you figured it out. Yeah, you scratched the surface. Spiritual journeys, <laughs> that's pretty hippie, but okay, go on. Just... Under, underneath the long hair and the crystal, <laughs> there's a hippie in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So, okay, so, so 24, you went on a spiritual journey. Yes. Yeah, the spiritual journey involved just expanding my horizons. I, I started touring with uh, the Grateful Dead, went to rainbow gatherings, went traveling, started meeting up with people kind of outside of my uh, typical comfort zone, right? People that, you know, had philosophies that didn't coincide with mine, but I wanted to keep an open mind about it. And one of the um, one of the groups that I, I uh, you know hung out with was vegetarian. And they you know when I went to go visit them, uh, stayed at their house. You know when we were ever on tour, we actually sold candles at Grateful Dead shows and 
Um, so they said, hey, you're, you know, we don't serve meat here. Uh, why don't you try it with us? And so we you know, made some great food. Uh, at the time, it was, I think, you know, lentil loaf was really popular, which is kind of an inspiration for the barbecue loaf. Um, and so what they did is they told me, uh, you know, if you're not vegetarian, like, why aren't you vegetarian yet? You know, was basically their, their approach. So they told me to go uh, drive down the street and go. There was a chicken rendering factory uh, at the end of the street. And I saw chickens being pulled, you know, being brought into the factory and then being, uh, you know, hanging upside down with their heads cut off, draining out the blood in a giant, uh, what they call a killing field or a bloodletting field um, and coming back in. And what really struck me is it doesn't stop. It's not like there's three or four chickens there. There was hundreds, if not thousands of chickens just coming in constantly, constantly. And I thought, wow, I'm supporting this, but it's invisible to me. So that started me being vegan. And then the problem was that I still had this issue with acne and that never really got fixed with my vegan diet. So I researched acne and found, just stumbled upon the early days of the internet. There was very few websites, one website called freeacnebook.com, totally free. I think it's still up. And it advocated a fruit-based diet to um, clear out the lymph system. And it, what it mentioned was the biochemistry of the lymph system is such that your body can become chronically dehydrated by eating proteinaceous foods that are damaged meaning cooked roasted nuts, you know, cooked proteins, um, meats, beans, anything that has protein in it. So I, I did it. I tried it for two weeks. I tried an a all-fruit diet, cucumber, avocado, tomato being the center of it. Those non-sweet fruits are very important. Um, after the cleanse, after two weeks, um, I started getting compliments on my skin. And for the first time, I was about 28 years old, first time in, let's see, probably about 16 years, didn't have any acne issues, didn't have any eczema. And that locked it in for me because then I, I felt confident. I could ask girls out on dates without thinking, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I have this skin issue. And, you know, it was, um, I always had this um, kind of feeling that, uh, you know, something was uncomfortable. Like I had bloating, didn't have a flat stomach. All that got solved as soon as I went to a raw vegan diet. So, so that's what started me on it was I really wanted to clear my skin. It's been clear ever since. So the last 20 years. Wow, we have the same uh, beginning or introduction to the raw food lifestyle because that's why I went raw. I just had, mm -hmm. I had cystic acne my whole life and it was just, I was so embarrassed. I had such low self-esteem. I was so um, self-conscious of my skin. I felt like I couldn't live my life, you know? People were just judging me, even though, you know, it was me judging me, you know? People are really not focused so much on our skin, but it's so hard when you're young, when you're in your 20s or your teenage years, and you don't mm -hmm. feel comfortable in your own body. It's so difficult, mm -hmm. and that's why I tried it as well. So you went raw vegan around the age of 28, correct? Or you mm -hmm. got introduced yeah. to this lifestyle. And so uh, how old are you now, may I ask? Um, I'm just shy of 50, so I'll be turning 49 in two weeks. Yeah, that's insane. That <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely insane because you were like you went raw at 28 and I was like aren't you 28 like you literally <laughs> look so young um Thank you. so you clearly don't need my new beauty book um so I will skip I that. Try some of the fruit makeup actually when <laughs> next time we have that um we at Woodstock Fruit Festival we had that that uh I guess it was uh train you know the the men dressed up as women and you know, got to borrow all the clothes and have a lot of fun with makeup and a lot of fun with skirts and everything. Um, now I know I can actually wear your makeup. So I'll do your makeup do next year if you want. So, that's super fun. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so basically um, you look 20 something and you're almost 50. So now uh, do you, is it all the raw foods? Do you say that it, the raw foods is exactly what makes you look so young or are there other tips and tricks that we can learn from you? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a tips and tricks is, it's in my opinion, it's more important what you don't do than what you mm -hmm. do. So I abstain from alcohol, I abstain from smoking. I live a sober lifestyle. Um, I find joy in connecting with people. I find joy in music, in uh, getting natural endorphins from exercise. Um, I, you know, set goals for myself every day. So I don't drink caffeine. Um, I just stay away from stimulation because I, I'm already energetic as it is. And I only, you know, sleep six hours a night, you know, sometimes uh, a little bit more depending on my needs. Um, but the raw vegan lifestyle is half of the equation. So, um, the skin is a reflection of your body. It's the largest organ. So there's 
two things that you need to do. One is don't put trash in your body. And the other one is when you do have trash in your body, make sure it gets out, right? So <laughs> take the trash out. Trash. Yeah. Right. Take the trash out because there's going to be, you know, your body is exposed to all, you know, your body has acidic waste products. That's a natural process. You're not going to ever get away from having acidic waste products in your body. That's part of metabolism. So, um, but there are some things that cause essentially what it is, chronic dehydration. That's alcohol, smoking, meat, dairy, wheat. I mean, all these things, they, they require a lot of water for your body to process because a lot of it is undigestible. And in fact, we're not really meant to digest those things. So the dehydration of the skin is really the, the, not only the cause of acne, but also why people who are on a raw vegan diet, they have properly hydrated skin. And so, you know, what we associate with aging, the, the wrinkles and, you know, the, the, the liver spots and, all, you know, uh, bags under the eyes and uh, loose sagging skin, that's a result of being overhydrated because your body has a lot of waste products in it. And is wanting to it causes edema because it wants to you know dilute that the the negative effects of those um, uh, acidic waste products that you're putting in your body in abundance right the acidic waste products from meat or alcohol you're putting in, in you know as the liver processes it it creates uh, poisons right it creates formaldehyde your body needs to isolate that so it does so by over pumping the areas with water and then what happens is when you're de as that um, as you go throughout your day or you move throughout your day, then that water moves out and it's like stretching over and over, right? Stretching your skin and then letting your skin go in and out, in and out from the overhydration and the underhydration. That's really what I feel is the cause of you know what we associate with aging skin. Um, so on a raw vegan diet, it's you know as long as you're abstaining from those things and not also putting the proper food in your diet, um, you know, proper food in your body, then your body just stays hydrated all the time. It, 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 it maintains water balance all by itself. You don't need to do anything. Um, when you're thirsty, it'll tell you to drink water. When, you know, you don't need water, water doesn't taste as good. Um, but also, you know, it doesn't need extra water because the diet is so clean and doesn't need to isolate the waste products. And then, as I mentioned, the other half is um, getting rid of those waste products, which uh, means you got to exercise. The lymph system does not have a pump. The cardiovascular system's got the heart. Pulmonary system has the lungs. The lymph system runs on our movement. So if you're stagnant and sitting, your lymph system is stale. It will start to calcify. Those waste products don't get out of your system and will start depositing um, in your skin. It will start depositing in the fatty areas of your body, in your lymph nodes. Um, many books written about this, the root cause of disease is acidosis, right? So moving those acids out of your body, you lose weight through your breath. When you breathe out, you're losing weight, you're burning calories. That's really the, the other half of the equation. Don't put trash in your body, but get rid of the trash by making sure you're doing, you're sweating saunas. You know, if you, if you feel that you can't move as much, go sweat in a sauna. Um, I run, you know, running, you, you lift weights, you do all kinds of CrossFit exercises, you carry watermelons around. I see, I've seen you actually convince a whole group of people that it's super fun to carry to run with a watermelon up a hill. I tricked that's, them. That's elimination. <laughs> I tricked them. You tell them they can eat the watermelon when they're done. But yeah. I always have weights around too. I always have some type of dumbbells around. You know, uh -huh. you can always have. You know, your fruit can be your weights, uh, depending on you know how many rep reps you do. But um, right. yeah, yeah, you got to move your body every day. Listen, I was taking yep. notes and then I stopped because I was like, I couldn't keep up with how many notes I wanted to take. I'm already out of paper. Listen, I have like too many questions now, but can you just um, explain more? First of all, I wish I would have interviewed you for the Raw Vegan Beauty book because like you're really knowledgeable and we didn't really get to talk at Woodstock because we were so busy running around you know, moving our lymph, okay, and, um, <laughs> and like running the show, you know, because if you guys don't know, Chef Ocean was the head chef at Woodstock Fruit Festival this year. He did a phenomenal job. Like, I don't know how you did it. I really, really don't. Um, and, um, and so, okay, you said that the body uh, creates formaldehyde from like excess protein. Is that, like, I've never heard that before. Alcohol. Um, alcohol. alcohol. Yeah, if, you, if you've ever heard of someone going blind from drinking too much, yes. um, that's because they pickled their eyes. Uh, they, the, the byproduct of, of alcohol 
uh, metabolism in the liver is formaldehyde, among many other harmful things. Your eyes are deeply connected to your liver. In fact, your liver protects your eyes so you don't go blind. Um, people black out. They go. They can literally go blind from uh, chronic, uh, you know, it, from people who suffer from alcoholism. Uh, that's what will happen is the, the formaldehyde will build up in your eyes and, and prevent you from ever seeing again. So it's a very dangerous chemical. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. Can you like, can you recommend a book on uh, health? Because clearly you're very, very knowledgeable. So what is like your favorite book that you read that might have like changed your life or put you on to this kind of information? Uh, so my inspiration came from Victor Skolbinskis. He wrote oh, a book yeah. called Survival of the 21st Century. And it's That's not a scientific a book. book. It's, it's, yeah, it's more of about his spiritual journey and his experiments. He's, um, you know, I, I got to meet him. I, I did a phone consultation with him recently just to check in with him. Um, that's my inspiration as well as uh, really just Googling. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I love Googling things and going through and finding um, exactly what happens at the biochemical level, like metabolism. Um, and I have a background also in um, toxicology. So I worked for an environmental engineering company as my first job. And um, the toxicology, uh, once you start studying toxicology, you realize that there's so many, so many um, things that we encounter in everyday life that do permanent damage to the body. Paints, for instance. I mean, paints cause some of the largest toxic spills that our Earth has ever seen. Some of the Superfund sites are based on paint. We thought lead was a good idea for a long time, so we put lead in paint. We put lead in gasoline, uh, asbestos. We thought that was a good idea. So um, learning about toxicology, learning about what's actually happening when you eat meat, what's actually happening when you eat dairy. And I'll tell you, the, the one thing I learned is those are opioid substances. Uh, wheat and dairy both are treated like from, by the body as opiates. So it's not your fault you love cheese. It's not your fault that you love bread. How often do you hear, Jeanette, how do you live without cheese? Yeah. Cheese is the, the opioids in the dairy and the wheat are drugs. We're addicted to drugs as a society. Alcohol is a drug. Caffeine is a drug. Stepping away from those drugs, learning what they actually do to your body, coupled with self-love. You have to love yourself because we often celebrate what I would call slow suicide. We drink coffee with friends. We meet with friends. We get drunk with friends, right? Those are like milestones in our lives. Those are those mark occasions where we all, you know, eat too much on Thanksgiving. So that self-destructive tendency of humans, I've never figured it out. I have it. You have it. We all have some level of self-destructive tendency. Um, I don't know why, but overcoming that with self-love is really the marker that I've seen in you and in all the other raw vegans, especially fruitarians. They love themselves, and that's the first step, is loving yourself, then learning how you can uh, practice self-love through your diet. I don't know if this makes sense, but tell me your thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. I think what happens is we're eating the vibration of love, and so it really affects how we feel about the world and about ourselves, perhaps this might have something to do with it. Perhaps. Because, yeah, I felt the same thing. Like, I hated myself, my life. I was very self-destructive as a teenager and in my 20s, uh, especially with food. I would just eat and eat and eat until I was severely sick. And, you know, like, I would have to throw up or I, like, literally couldn't move. And I just kept doing it to myself. And I don't know why. I didn't know why. And I felt like a drug addict, and I was. I was addicted to, you know, processed carbohydrates. And so perhaps it's the vibration of the food, you know, that like, it's, there's a lot of hate vibration. There's a lot of evil vibration in animal products. And so we become that, you know, we become what we eat. And um, real quick, before we forget, um, somebody asked the book, it's survival for the 21st century. Uh, I was going to write the author's name, but I have no idea how to... Sp oh, thank you. There you go. <laughs> of course, you would know, because that's like some name. Like, And I met him too. I don't know where, but I met him like five, six years ago. And he's like 90-something mm -hmm. probably. I mean, God knows how old he yeah. is. And he's just like a kid. 
he's just like a kid. I remember he was like hitting on me and like, he's like this kid. And I was like, you're like 99 years old, Everybody hits, everybody hits on you, Jeanette. You just don't, Honestly. you just don't realize it. That's why I wrote the beauty book, guys. Check out the Robbie and Beauty book. If you want 99 year olds to hit on you, it works. It works. Okay. So um, thank you for writing that guy's name, uh, Victorious, Victorious Klavinskis, because he is yes. one of the pioneers of the, like, I wouldn't say raw food movement. I would just say a natural hygiene, natural lifestyle, right? Like, yeah, so self love movement. He, you know, he's his goal was to be a centenarian. So um, he, he talks about uh, all kinds of different things about how to breathe fresh air and how to massage, you know, do massage and the beauty within you. I mean, we are spiritual beings living a human experience, right? So I love what you said about eating love. And I wanted to talk about that um, real quick because the part of this spiritual awakening, the spiritual journey, involved my connection with nature, and I have a you know deep deep love for nature. And there was um, probably a period of a couple years when I first went on a raw vegan diet when I just started getting like looking at trees, just staring at them and thinking, I you know I call it a tree, but what is it really? You know what am I looking at here? Like what is this being in front of me? And I got this realization that trees and plants, like they friggin' love us. I mean, they they give us stuff to eat. They breathe in what we breathe out. I mean, this symbiotic relationship we have with plants, that's like the purest love possible. It's totally unconditional. They always want us to grow toward the sun. They want to provide us with fruit. The only thing they ask in return is that we take the seeds and move around for them because they can't walk. So this, this is love in its purest form. When you walk up to a tree and grab a persimmon or an apple, that tree loves you. I mean, it's a love that is never going to stop, and they love you so much. And so we eat that love, and that's really the first step in this journey towards self-love. The raw vegan bundle is like the shortcut to it, right? Yes. Go get some living <laughs> foods in you. But you got to go out to the wild nature. You have to experience feet, you know, you're barefoot in the grass. I mean, you're, we're surrounded by love, but we you got to go go to the area where the plants can talk to you directly. And that's how I keep my connection with nature is through my living foods lifestyle. That's why I've been doing this for 20 years. It's just that love coming in and I see it like it was it's almost like uh, if someone, you know, someone buys you a gift and you never open it like that's sad, you know, or it makes you a gift. So so go out and eat the living foods because those gifts are just sitting there waiting for you to open them. Wow. Oh, that's so powerful. And thank you, Ocean, for saying this because, you know, I don't have a lot of raw food friends in my life. And people make fun of me very often on a daily basis because I like when I'm around fruit specifically, when I see amazing fruit or fruit trees in nature, I get really excited. And I'm just like, oh, my God, how beautiful is this? Like, this is a miracle. And people are like, um, okay, Jeanette, we know you're a fruity weirdo. We get it. Like, you don't have to like keep, but I can't help it. And people don't really understand where I'm coming from, but you just set, put it into words like that. This is normal. Like this is normal to get excited about nature and the beautiful things that, that it provides for us. And, um, yeah, I think there's a, such a serious, uh, disconnection between us and our source. The source is nature. You know, right. and we wouldn't be here without it. We we literally we're here. Most people are not eating a natural diet. And um, this is what happens. Like the energetic um, uh, flow is disturbed, you know, in our body and in the world because we're not eating the things that we're supposed to be eating. We're not doing the things we're supposed to be doing. Like you said, getting into nature. We're supposed to be in nature 24 seven, right? And what do we get into nature? Maybe 10 minutes if we're lucky, you know, with our bare feet on the floor. Um, guys, put a, put the paw emoji, you know that paw emoji? Put it in the comments below if you got your feet into the, the earth today, either the sand or the ocean or the soil or the grass, put the paw emoji. And so question, I wanna, so many things I wanna ask you, but I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, you're in Italy, so I'm guessing you want to get off Instagram. You know? <laughs> so just like uh, two more questions, if you have time. 
Sure. Um, mm -hmm. So one question is that, okay, so you use um, a lot of things like you use lentils and chickpeas in your new book, uh, but you don't cook them. Uh, can you just sure. tell people um, how they can eat those raw and like stay on the raw food living lifestyle? Absolutely. So um, one thing I want to mention is these are actually a fruitarian. Uh, they, I, I call myself a full spectrum fruitarian. This is the same diet that we ate at Woodstock Fruit Festival. Peas, lentils, mung beans, these are botanically classified as fruit. So a fruit is anything that starts off with a flower and is the ovary of that flower. And I did so, not know, you know that. Wow. Yep, if, you ask, if you ask any botanist, they will tell you legumes are in the fruit family. So you can still eat these things and, and call yourself a fruitarian. Um, so the way that I view, let's say, uh, garbanzo beans, because it's so much fun to say. Garbanzo. Um, <laughs> garbanzo. <laughs> chichi beans. You're in Italy. Really yes. Yeah. <laughs> so these chichi beans, um, they're, they're like little suitcases, right? They're, they're, they're these cute little, little butt beans, is actually what chichi means, little butt beans, because they look like a little butt. They're packed to go to their first day of school, like a little kindergartner. They got their backpack on. They got their lunch all packed. And so they get dried, right? The sun dries them out. They're, so they kind of go to sleep for a little while, right? When the water in the springtime, the snow melts and activates them, now they're ready to go to their first day of school. They're all packed. And the first thing that they do is they start eating what's in the backpack, right? So that's the starch that you see in, in the, uh, in the uh, bean, right? The little butt bean. It's got its, it's got its starch lunch in there. And it will start eating the starch and it will convert that to amino acids and sugar because it needs to build cells. It needs to grow itself into a big, uh, you know, eighth grader. So it needs to start taking all the, the food and eating it. And those amino acids are what build cell walls. We need eight of them. We could produce eight. We need, you know, there's 16 total that we actually need that are essential. So um, they're actually universal. Like the, the plants use, uh, produce the same amino acids that we, we need. As I said, plants love us. So they, they want us to, to do well too. So as that sprout is growing, we can actually eat those sprouts and intercept the amino acids and, and use those amino acids in place of eating pre-built proteins, which are amino acid chains, and having to break those down. So when you're eating the bean, even though it's high protein because it's hard, it's actually very hard to digest that because you need to go through the process of breaking it down into amino acids. Well, if you just give the bean a little bit of water, that first grader is going to turn into a third grader real quick within a couple days. They've got their whole amino acid store. The starch level goes down. And then that becomes now a food that we can use to build muscle without having to break down the proteins already, the amino acids. So you want to think of it as like we're, we're stealing their, their school lunch, right? We're, we're stealing it their school lunch when we, um, when we boil the beans and we eat them like that. But if we allow them to eat their lunch – they're going to reward us in a couple of days as a sprout with something that will help our bodies grow. So that's the idea of introducing legumes. That is such a cute, fun way of putting it. Now I understand. Uh, were you a teacher ever? <laughs> yes, I've taught. I've been teaching martial arts for about 20 years. And yeah, um, yeah I teach, I teach uh, skiing. So yeah, yeah it's, I, I think being able to talk to people that's my that's how i thrive is i love connecting with people yes i can understand it now okay so because i personally i looked at your book your book is so beautifully made i love the i love the layout i love how you did it it just is easy for me to to read and understand what to do you know in the clean just like uh, minimalist way that you did it i really love the layout of your book and i was looking at the recipes and i was like oh wow i've never as a raw vegan, I've never had chickpeas. I've never sprouted lentils, really, uh -huh. because I didn't understand, like I didn't really know if it was natural or like healthy for me to do, you know, I'm used to having fruit, pick it off the tree. But like the way you just explained it, it makes a lot of sense to me. And um, uh, so I'm definitely gonna try it. Um, and you, um, so you have like things that I've never seen before, raw vegan doll. I've never seen that before, ever. Um, so that's very, very interesting. And so um, I just, oh, yeah, people have questions. Or somebody had a question. Hold on, let me just get to that real quick. Um, yeah, somebody said, take questions, please. Okay, give us, we'll answer one question. Chef Ocean will answer one of your questions. I won't ask one of mine, so you guys can ask 
one of yours. You should have a YouTube channel where you answer simple questions about living foods and health. Yes, Chef Ocean, do you have a YouTube channel? I'm working on it. Yeah, I'm working on it. I got it. I'm trying to get these recipe books out first so people can do that asynchronously. And um, yes, I have a video course coming out. I've been asked to do a YouTube channel. So yes, that's my next goal. I have a whole list of things that I want to do. Um, so stay tuned. You can actually check check me out on Instagram and I'll start doing announcements. I have a website, rawvegan.love. Um, so this is a, my, I've been emerging from my, um, from my mountain hideaway, uh, living in the woods and, and being quiet. And now, you know, this is the time for me to go out on social media. So thank you. It sounds like I already have a few subscribers. Of that course. Gives me a lot of and you know, mountain hideaway, the more you speak, the more hippie I'm getting here. It's almost like you're a hybrid. <laughs> you're like a fit, active, productive hippie, you know, all in one. Yeah. So I like it. I'm into it because, you know, there's not one stereotype. I'm so tired of these stereotypes. Like I'm a hippie, but nobody believes me because, you know, I live in a penthouse on the beach and, you know, I get my nails done or whatever. But literally, I am a hippie because I believe in the nature and I know the power of it. And that's really what a hippie is. Someone who just goes against society and just doesn't go with the mainstream. And I think that's everyone that's into yeah. health. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen that already. Um, I'm also a software engineer. That's my main job. So uh, I remember I was not allowed to be a nerd in the 1980s. That was really a <laughs> stigma. There's even movies about it, how nerds always get beat up. And, you know, that was a stereotype even from the 50s. Nerds get sand kicked in their face by the big muscle bound guy. But, you know, guess what? Nerds won. Nerds won. We're all using computers and phones now, which, you, I, you know, you would have gotten a wedgie in my high school for using <laughs> that stuff. So. So I think it's the year, it's, it's the, the, the hippies are going to, the next ones to come through, the ones that actually like nature, um, that, are, that are, God forbid, being nice to people, right? <laughs> Hugging people instead of shaking hands, you know, enjoying music, you know, all those, you know, stretching their bodies, like, come on. Yeah, that's, guys, that's the give, us a, uh, give us a peace sign in the comments if you're also a hippie and you like to be nice to yourself and to other people. Yes. And you're so right, Ocean. Yeah, the next wave uh, is going to be the hippies because everyone now is realizing they have to take their health into their own hands. They have to. They're realizing that, guess what? The powers that be don't actually care about nope. our health. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Screw, fuck them, you know, okay? We don't need yeah, them to yeah. care about our health. We care about our own health. And um, yeah, before we go, I just want everyone to check out the Raw Vegan Bundle. Click the link in Chef Ocean's bio or my bio, whichever you prefer, and then you can get access to 55 Raw Vegan books, okay? All low-fat, all salt-free, oil-free, all like incredible recipes from hot dogs to uh, tostadas to tiramisu, to sausages, dal, um, guacamole. Guacamole, it's so hard for me to say that. But literally, mm -hmm. I'm never gonna make guacamole again. Like, I have a feeling yep. this is gonna like change the game for me because I don't wanna <laughs> consume, you know, like making guacamole, you need at least two, three avocados. And that's like way too much fat. I don't feel good the next day. So I'm really excited. And so for the peas, I'm gonna use like frozen peas. Is there like, can you get fresh? Yeah. Like. Yeah, I, I get fresh peas sometimes in, in Eugene. There's a period of about uh, one month when I can get fresh peas, okay. and I'll make it out of that. The frozen peas, go okay. ahead and use them. They're, they're, they're excellent for you, and it's a great way to be able to get guacamole in the wintertime. That's amazing, guys. And then, you know, like, it's hard sometimes to stay raw in the winter. You know, we convince ourselves that it's hard sometimes. But with these recipes yeah. that you're going to find in the bundle and in Chef Ocean's book, like, how easy is that to have like frozen peas in your freezer for like backup food? You know, you always need backup and you make mm -hmm. your guacamole and I'm just so excited. And I'm actually gonna do the lentils <laughs> and the chickpeas cause you just convinced me that, you know, it's easy, I can do it. And um, wait, so you said four to five days, I need to soak them? Uh, for chickpeas. Yeah, ch so chickpeas, um, this is how you do sprouts, real quick one. Soak them in water to wake them up, right? Um, soak them in water overnight. Next morning, drain them. Uh, take all the water out, put them in a colander. That's how I do it. So the airflow gets underneath it. Rinse them twice a day with a sprayer. Make sure they're, you know, they're not in standing water and just watch your little guys grow. That's all you got to do. You can, you know, put them in a dark place, put them in a light place if you want to be more green. Garbanzo beans take a little bit longer, but lentils and mung beans take one to two days.
Guys, follow Chef Ocean. Click the link in his bio to check out his book. It's amazing. Living Foods for Athletes. Ocean, please, let's do this again because I literally have to watch this live because I learned so much. I couldn't keep taking notes. I was just like out of paper and wow, you are so knowledgeable and so kind for coming on here last minute with me. I really appreciate you. Thank you so, so, so much. And let's do this again, please, okay? Yes, that sounds great. And I want to hear more about your beauty book because I want to learn how to put on eyeshadow <laughs> made of fruit. That's what I want to do. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Enjoy Italy. Thank you for taking some time to be with us and I'll see you soon. All right, bye, Joan. Bye, bye. Ocean. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so, so, so much. Let's see. Let me look at some of these comments. Wow, he is incredible. I learned so much. And it's crazy because I met him at Woodstock, but I never got to speak with him because I was in charge and he was in charge. I was in charge of the volunteers. He was in charge of the food. And like there, there was no time. And like, wow, what a, like, what a wealth of information. And he just honestly really made me feel like, I love when people make me feel like there's nothing wrong with me. I guess I have this complex that there's something wrong with me, but he just literally, he made me feel like, okay, getting excited about fruit is like natural and normal. Why wouldn't we get excited about our, you know, our species specific food and like nature and um, being, you know, like a weirdo. It's just so, I don't know. People always call me weird because I get so excited. Even, you know, what's funny, even I know some raw vegans, raw vegans that have called me weird for getting excited about fruit. But by the way, these raw vegans, those were the people that like, they, they eat junk food and then they go raw and then they eat junk food and then they go raw. So they got a little toxicity in them, I think. Um, okay. So here we go. I missed the conversation about peas for guacamole. I'll have to check it out. Yes, you have to check it out. Click the link in my bio because this is where you're going to find this recipe. It is called guacamole, and it's fucking genius. And I didn't curse during our interview, and I'm so proud of myself. Oh, wait, I did curse. I said, fuck the Illuminati. Yeah, that was not ideal. I'm trying to grow, so I'm trying to like be less um, controversial. <laughs> okay, because I'm trying to inspire... Literally, my goal is a, a billion people to go vegan. So if I can't, if they shadow ban my account again, I'm not going to be able to grow. By the way, this is my friend Frank's shirt. I saw Frank in here, but I don't know if he's still here. Go fruit, uh, got fruit. Check out him for that fruitful Frank. He's, he has these shirts. They're amazing. Um, I connected from him to Arnold's way. Yes, yes, yes. You're so gorgeous and beautiful. Am I? I didn't comb my hair again. So I will try to do that before my next live. Um, let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And I love your voice, by the way. Yes, my voice. Yes. I, honestly, I would love to be a radio speaker. Yes. Awa, oh, somebody said that I should, I have like a cool radio speaking voice. Yes, I do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Raw Vegan Bundle podcast, where you can find 55 books. Just close your eyes, guys. Close your eyes. 55 books for only $50 only until Monday. 12 o'clock midnight Eastern uh, Pacific time. I'm sorry. Um, in this bundle, you have over a thousand recipes for simply five cents a recipe. Where else will you find this? Nowhere else. Click the link in my bio for more details. You see that voice? I hope you guys close your eyes during that. Um, thank you so much. Watermelon online. What a name. What a name. I don't know where that came from. Uh, it's because of him I got connected with the Raw Vegan Bundle. Yes. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, the Raw Vegan Bundle is like literally the best thing on the internet. Uh, I would definitely get it if I didn't already get it because I'm a contributor. So I, of course, have it. Um, and yeah, Chef Ocean's book is actually really, really valuable because it's like all these rare, like it's all these recipes that I've never seen before. And there's things that I can actually use. So like he makes sausages. He makes it from, I think, mushrooms and um, like different vegetables, like things that I actually know what they are. Like I can find them. Some recipes, I'm just like, where would I find this shit? He uses like sprouted chickpeas, sprouted lentils, lots of vegetables, uh, mushrooms, no like crazy ingredients that you have to just like order on the internet and wait like a year for it to come. Do you like the carnivore diet? No, I don't like blood in my food. I prefer fruit 
and veggies. Thank you, though. No, I don't do the carnivore diet because I'm not a serial killer. Thank you, though. Thank you, though. Uh, that's kind of scary. I personally wouldn't live with somebody eating meat because it's just like, what is the difference between my meat and an animal? Like, I'd be scared to sleep at night with a non-vegan in the house, honestly. Honestly. His spirit is so awesome. Like, what an awesome being he is. Like, wow. I, I felt the love through the screen. And, you know, I wish we spoke more at the festival. At the festival. I couldn't say that right. Um, so, yes. Go check out Chef Ocean's page. I mean, just look at his name. Look at his name. It's Raw Vegan Love. Like, that's his name, right? Like, what, a, what an amazing guy. Um, yeah, definitely want to do more lives with him. That was awesome. He's so knowledgeable. So... So much more knowledgeable than me, okay? I was taking notes. I, uh, I stopped because I was like, fuck it. I'll just rewatch the live. But basically, when he said that alcohol um, turns into formaldehyde, okay, in the body, that and then ruins our eyesight, people go blind from drinking alcohol. I re it really hit me because my mom is currently having severe uh, eyesight issues, and she is an alcoholic, and... She's going to kill me because she's probably going to watch this. She's not an alcoholic, but she drinks alcohol. And I just want to say, anybody that drinks alcohol, I call them an alcoholic. Because why would you drink poison? I just realized my mom's probably going to watch this because it's going on YouTube and my mom knows how to access YouTube. Sorry, mom. But I care about you and I don't want you to go blind. I'm sorry. We got to stop drinking alcohol. Seriously. This is insane. This is insane. I had no idea. And formaldehyde is very, very scary. Um, and the fact that alcohol... Like, that's a byproduct of alcohol in the body. Mind blown. I had no idea. It's the devil's juice. Yes, everybody, everybody try to get my mom off alcohol. <laughs> my mom's going to fucking kill me. Uh, I think I'll cut this part out, maybe, for YouTube so my mom doesn't kill me. But you're killing yourself, mom. It's not me. I'm not killing you. You're killing yourself. And you know what's crazy? You're not going to die. You're just going to go blind. So perhaps we get off alcohol. Imagine being a raw vegan and your, your parent doesn't, uh, is, she's pretty healthy, right? Like she takes my advice. I got her a blender. I got her a juicer. She's doing her thing. She's doing yoga. She's eating lots of fresh fruit and vegetables. But she, you know, you're, you're drinking poison. There's, there's not much we can do if you're putting in poison. Um, and like Chef Ocean just said, honestly, there's no substitution for what you're putting in so what he said was i gotta write yeah it's more about i gotta write all this in a, my journal it's more about what you don't do it's more about what you don't do than what you do and that's the that's the truth it's what we don't eat that heals us it's what we don't eat that heals us so if you are eating a raw vegan diet but you are smoking cigarettes or you are drinking alcohol, or you are swimming in a chlorinated pool every day, or you are, um, you, you know, doing something that, like, really you know is poisonous, okay? Um, it's, there's so, just so much that raw foods can do, okay? you got to stop putting in the poison. And Richard, thank you for being here. Don't cut it out. She needs to hear the truth. I know, but she's going to fucking unsubscribe. <laughs> and I need all the subscribers. I need all my subscribers. I have, like... I don't have a lot, okay, so I can't lose any. Is kombucha safe to drink? Great question. What would you guys say about kombucha? Um, personally, I do have kombucha once in a while. I consider kombucha my alcohol. I don't consider it a health food, okay, but I consider it my alcohol. So, like, it's my champagne. I really enjoy it, but I know that it's not good for me because it has caffeine. Most kombucha or all kombucha that I know of is, like, black tea or green tea, and those things contain caffeine. Caffeine is something uh, that should be illegal. It's a stimulant. It's a drug. And most people are on caffeine. They're on drugs. And um, I don't want to be one of those people, okay? Um, caffeine contains theobromine, extremely bad for your brain. It's a neurotoxin, in fact. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't consume it. So I do drink it, like maybe for weddings. Like if somebody gets married, I'll drink it. Um, but, you know, Chef Ocean really convinced me just now, like, why am I doing that? Why am I doing uh, any harm to my health while, you know, to celebrate life? Like, this is silly. Um, I think I saw another question. Um, 
Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, kombucha, you asked me a while ago. It destroys all the main organs. Uh, alcohol destroys all the main organs. Isn't that crazy? Somebody's requesting to be live with me, but like, that's pretty scary to me. Like, if I don't know you, like, what if I, I allow you to join my life and you're like naked jerking off? Like, I can't, I can't risk that, guys. So I'm not going to accept your request. But I thank you guys so much. I have to go take a shower now because I didn't get to shower yet. I, I went to the beach today. I worked out. I worked out. I did another interview. And uh, people are calling me. And um, I have sand in my hair and sand in places that should never be. Okay. And so um, let me go shower. And I'll see you guys at 2 30 would you accept my request <laughs> oh yeah richard i would accept your request but don't request because i have to go but i'll see you guys back here at 2 30 for a uh, interview with the gorgeous beautiful liana from pure vegan food i see you guys soon she's the beautiful um woman that was on yesterday with me if you saw my stories uh she oh my god i'm so excited to talk to her i cannot believe she's 40. I just found out she's 40. And then Chef Ocean is 50. Get the fuck out of here. Like, I, I thought I looked good. Like, damn. Like, damn, guys. Like, I can't believe it. So check me out at 2.30 back here. I'll see you guys soon. You get a little break. A little misfit break. I missed your out, but let's do it tomorrow. Uh, yes, let's do it tomorrow.